guess storytelling and the love of stories first began for me. And I just want to say thanks to everyone zooming in. I can see people in Wiradjuri country over there at a place called Coolerman. So Rachel, hello, and, and Cass. And um, I know there's so many things we can be doing and I know lots of people are completely zoomed out. So thank you for joining us tonight. Fantastic, Anita. Look, I'm, I'm going to start us off because I'm really um, interested in how you were finding um, writing a play and you've written this book version of it already and um, what is it is it a really do you find it so different I mean it's such a different form on the page but is the writing of it really different well, there's a couple of things there. It is completely different. The whole the whole process is different. Uh, and I had no experience whatsoever of, of writing for the theatre. I had tried to write for television, which I guess is very similar because what you're doing is you're writing, you know, drama and dialogue as opposed to every single sense and every single detail of what the character sees on the page. And so I will say that I think, I'll start by saying, I think it was easier for me adapting a novel to a script as it uh, then sitting down and trying to write a play from scratch. So all I did to start with, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, my dramaturg Nadine McDonald Dowd gave me a lot of um, plays to read. I had read a lot of Aboriginal theatre because my PhD is on uh, Aboriginal literature and publishing. So I'd read Jack Davis and Bobby Merritt um, and obviously Kevin Gilbert, who wrote the first play, The uh, the Cherry Pickers, back in 1968. So uh, I had read some theatre, I'd read Stolen, I'd been to see lots of theatre and, and had appreciation of storytelling on the stage, but I really had zero idea of how to to turn, you know, 90,000 words into, uh, uh, into a script. So, so I started reading scripts again um, and thanks to Nadine, she gave me quite a few scripts that she'd worked on as a dramaturg, as a playwright, as an artistic director at Elbidgery, and she's at QPAC now. Um, and really what I sat down to do was just try and turn all the text from the novel into dialogue, really. And so, the you know, the first, you know, original first scene was three hours long or something um, and it took me pretty much nine months to learn that I had to let go of some of the some of the storyline or the you know moments that were precious to me in the novel um, because they didn't work in the play or they weren't necessary in the play and also because the play is meant to go for 80 minutes so it took me a long time to understand that I it, the, the play is just a new version and it doesn't have to be tr absolutely 100% true to the to the novel and also going through the process you write you know I wrote the first draft and then we workshopped it with actors so we had Shari Sevens and uh, you'll know from the Sapphires and um, and we had Shari Sevens and Justin Clark played the uh, played Nadine who's an alcoholic uh, author who lives in Upper Brookfield and possibly one of my favourite characters. It's not me. None of the characters are me. There's a lot of me and everybody. Um, but um, she, so we had them zoom in with, uh, um, oh, my goodness, with Colin miller out oh, this is terrible, uh, zooming in as well. And we had also had um, Kylie Farmer zoom in from Perth. So we had them on Zoom and then we had... Um, actors, local actors in the studio when because it was COVID, so we could only have a few in the studio anyway. And what happens is, so you have, I've written this draft and I would have cried every day that week because one, it's emotional hearing the actors bring it to life. But then at the end of the reading, we go around and we ask each of them to talk about what they learned from their characters or what they felt could be different. So not, so the authors in this space will know we have an editor and we have a publisher who will give us advice along the way. Sometimes our agents might read them and give us advice as well. But all of a sudden there's eight actors, a dramaturg, an artistic director, and I think on one day um, Todd was in the room as well. So everybody had a comment on how to improve it. So there were tears of, oh, fuck, I can't do this. And, you know, I wrote the novel, you guys can do this. But the thing is, in that process... The actors know, like they've done this a hundred mm. times. They know mm. how it works uh, and they can hear uh, what works and what doesn't work. So Chrissy mentioned we did a live reading recently, which is amazing, and I'm so grateful for that because I didn't understand either that that happened in the process. But I sat there and I could hear 
what didn't work. And I could hear uh, which the, there's five main characters named after um, their book club is named after Vixen. So it's Veronica, uh, Isabel, Xanthe, Ellen and Nadine. And that their stories are all meant to have equal, you know, uh, an equal... Wait. Wait. Wait, except for maybe Izzy, because she opens with Izzy's story and it ends with Izzy. But what I saw on that night, and, and you might have seen this too, Chrissy, is Nadine as the character, and she had props and things. She was so big that it almost felt like it was Nadine's story. And so you don't know that till you actually see it all on stage and you hear it out loud and so forth. So it's an interesting process. It's, it takes It's longer in some ways than writing a book for me because I, uh, for me, researching is the long is the long haul of the journey uh, and writing I can write relatively quickly so it's 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 probably one of the most challenging things I've done but I'm so excited to say I'm an emerging playwright I don't need to do it again once that's enough Take that box move Maybe on. Forget, you that's might hilarious forget, like childbirth you might forget the fame and come back for more well, having not given birth, I can't, I can't comment that. But who knows? I mean, it's sort of, it's also, it's like running a marathon or running a half marathon or actually running three Ks today. You know, you do it and you go, are oh, you running? And you go, oh, why, why, why am I doing it? And we do this as novelists. I don't know. Mm. And probably, we do it and we go, okay. I'm, I've done this every novel. I say to my agent, yeah. I'm not doing this again. I can't do this again. Mm. And it's like at the end of a race, I'm, not, I'm never doing it. Why, why am I doing this? And then half an hour later, I'm going, okay, what's the next one? Because... It's either in you or it's not in you. But the, the mm. theatre thing, um, I mean, I'd be, I'm hoping all I want from the play is that when people go, male and female, and uh, all, um, you know, because they talk about gender binary, we talk about gender, briefly we flag gender binary, whoever comes to the play, I just want them to feel something and I want them to walk out feeling like they've, whatever their choices they've made in life, uh, they are, they're validated or that they feel a bit greater um a greater uh, appreciation for the women in their life particularly for their mothers and their sisters and so forth and i'm rambling now sorry mm. oh, i'll hand over to mirandy in one second but i yeah. just wanted to say that i did i walked out of that space like this is just the reading of a work in process and i could see that it was going to be more than this eventually you know it was going to be you were going to hone it and make it into something different but um, I walked out of that feeling, like feeling things with all the feels. So oh. it's working so far. Thank you. Can you hear mm -hmm. my mum talking in the background by chance? We can't Not hear really, no. Okay. Just hear you. Um, Anita, I'm curious what, what first you got into, you know, like what made you decide to make it into a play and why Titters and not one of your others, like the barbed wire cherry blossoms or, yeah. So what, what how, what role, you know? It's a really good question, actually. I uh, I'd never thought about writing a play because, as I said, my view is I wrote the novel. Someone else can do whatever needs yeah. to be done, and so yeah. forth. And I, we all know what our what our capacity is in, in, in whatever we're creating. And I am. Um, um, but I was approached by Laboite and uh, mm. UPAC, uh, you know, amazing performing arts um, places and theatres that nurture really yeah. nurture and showcase Queensland uh, stories. Yeah. And, and so the Boite, it's the first time they've done it. So as a partnership between the Boite and QPAC. So they'd had a conversation already and read the book. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, Sonia Simic and Nadine. Well, Nadine McDonald dowd had read drafts of the novel and that's where the name Nadine came from, that play. And so, and I trust, I've known her for 20 odd years or more. So I trust her in terms of the theatre space. And because I said, I, I don't know how to do this. Like I'm going to need help all the, every step of the way. Um, and so they approached me and then the ball started rolling. And, and then you just realise how many people are interested in Queensland stories that you know right. I think Brisbane is such an underrated city and I'm from Sydney and I love Sydney and I mean I have friends who can't understand why I live there I'm going it is and then I rattle off all the things you can do in Brisbane in a tiny radius culture mm. the river everything you want is right there and um, and so if you know if you asked me what book would I do next I don't even know because I think Titters was a great one to start with I think um I think Barbed Wire and Cherry Blossoms, which is about the Carol Breakout, I think that would work as theatre. Maybe, who knows, because I don't know. It work know. as a film. Work as a film. I hope I hope the, 
the play of titters inspires somebody to do something with it. It was yeah. optioned for twice for a six part TV series, but that didn't go anywhere. For titters? For titters. Yeah. When it was first. You might have to write the screenplay for the barbed wire. Cherry Blossom. That'll be your next step. That'll be your next step, Anita. There's better people than me for that, honestly. Thank you don't know that. You Thank don't know that. They might approach you next. <laughs> Thank you for your faith. Don't you love it when people, you know, approach you with these things? Like you said, you hadn't done it before and you hadn't thought of it. You thought there were other people to do that. But then when they approach you, it's such a great opportunity that whether you want to or not, you have to take it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's, you know what else is interesting? Sitting in that space with actors, with women, Mm. Uh, and, and there's one bloke who plays um, as it was Sean Pryor. So some of you will know Boy Monty Pryor, the author. And so oh, yeah. His yep. nephew played oh, all the bands in the play. But <laughs> it's interesting in being in that space because what we're doing is we're talking about women's lives. We're talking about friendships that are challenged over time. We're talking about relationships and menopause and mm. um, dating and, mm. and and careers and um, how, and being boxed and so forth and, and failed marriages and, and not being able to, to conceive and everything. And we're sitting in this space talking about stories and issues that are relevant to every single woman on the planet. Mm. Um, and that so, is true. It covers a lot of, a lot of ground, those yeah. five characters. Yeah. And, and you know, when you write a book, when you, whatever you write, write a novel, you know, you have a, we have an intention of what we want yeah. to get out of that story, yeah. but you have no control. No. Over how people read. And you might no. write a love story and someone else reads it as a political story. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. we can only go into the, the library uh, and write or we can only go into the theatre space and write uh, with goals of what we hope will come out of that. But there is zero guarantees of any of that. Mm. Yeah. And do you know... Oh, sorry. You I go, was, Chrissy. I was just going to talk about... Because you've talked about the collaboration with the actors and with Nadine... Um, do you do you think that um, was there anything about that collaborative process that you found strange as an author who normally writes alone, um, you know, in your garret? Um, was was the collaboration a strange thing to do as a literary author? Yeah. Well, you know, you anybody who's writing anything, short story or poetry or whatever, that's a solo act. You know, you're writing something. You know it. You know why you're writing it. You know what it means to you what the purpose of that line is or that chapter and what's interesting in that space is I felt like because I knew the story I felt like and isn't it's just a reality not negative but I felt like I had to explain things over and over again about why that was there and oh but you know that doesn't seem like that's would that really happen? And I go, yeah, because I was the one that went to the Jungian therapist because Veronica is a Jungian therapist because she's so sad. And I, I said, that's a real story. I went to a Jungian therapist. That therapist said that to me. So I didn't make this shit up, you know. So um, it's I feel like, and, and we do it to a le with much lesser degree to editors when they might write something in the margin, but I felt like I was constantly having to, not a negative, but that's just the process so that the actors know the intention behind the line. And then that, that informs the way they um, can carry the character and so forth as well. So um, I, I, I can see how I've grown over emotionally, whatever, over time, because I was probably really more defensive at the beginning. And as I said, I cried a lot because I, I was like, I can't do this, I can't do this. Um, and then I once I let myself just relax and go let go of the novel like Nadine said I don't want to see that novel come in here again I had like sticky things every all the way through it right don't bring it in again you'll leave that at home because this is a newer version and so forth and I, I when I allowed myself to just be creative and sit down and raise the bar in terms of um, character behavior and so forth I actually really enjoyed the process more and then I mean, I don't know any anybody who's in this in the Zoom room tonight that's had a written something that actors have brought to life. But I remember the first time at um, the State Library of Queensland did an event for Paris Dreaming, and they just had uh, seven actors doing a reading. Uh, all these Murray actors putting on French accents was hilarious, and it's really it's really emotional thing to see um, other people bring your words to life on the stage and. Um, I think about failure all the time and um, I think, you know, I think the having this, the process is about making sure the end product is the best it could be, as it is when we have a structural editor, a copy editor, their job is to make the, 
make you, our work the best it can be. So I have absolute faith now. I'm not that I didn't have faith before, but I think I, I was naive. I didn't know how. And um, and I think it will be eventually in 2045 when it goes on stage. It will be. It'll be. It'll be an amazing theatre piece. I hope. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be great. Hey, so I'm. Um, we've got ten minutes left of our time, so I'm just aware that um, we normally end with um some recommendations of books and I know that you have some so shall we move to some recommendations and then if we have time at the end we can come to any questions that anyone from the audience might want to okay you know, great I've, good idea I've just pulled up my I've got a blog I will put the link actually in the chat room now so for NADOC I did Nita's NADOC reads so I thought it was a good time to do that so I'm going to run through it. I saw we saw is a beautiful children's picture book by your new students and the Norman Boy Primary School with Anne James many of you know her as illustrator and Anne Haddon it's, it's by the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. So if you've got kids, grab that. It's absolutely beautiful. It's about life in the Lumboy. Uh, Shirley Purdy, My Story, was by published by Magabala, and she's an extraordinary artist and tells her story in her own language. I can't remember off the top of my head now. And in English, beautiful, um, beautiful picture book. I Want to Be a Superhero. I love this by Brianna Humes, illustrated by Anne Boleyn uh, Quang Molina. And it's about a girl who, as a, she wrote it when she was 11 and wanted to put on a cape and be a superhero. And really it's about this, it's about you can be anything you want. You can put a cape and be anything you want. You might not be able to fly, but you can, it's, it's a motivational picture book, really. It's brilliant. And linked to that is Girls Can Fly by Sally Morgan and her daughter, Anne Boleyn Quamalina. And that's, I think that's like a little affirmation book for upper primary, but I absolutely love it. Every page you open up, it's reminding you, like yourself, always like yourself and so forth. Uh, five Front, most of you will know that already. First Nations Poetry and Power, edited by Alison Whitaker. It's got all the pioneers like Ujuru, Nunakal. Um, it's got Lionel Fogarty, Samuel Wagon Watson. Um, it's got all uh, established many poets who have passed over, but lined up against new and emerging poets as well. So that's a great um, collection of poetry. Oh, and each section is opened by an essay. Uh, but a beauty next generation black writing oh there's a typo in my blog edited by Elfie Shiyosaki and Linda Martin is an anthology by writing students in Western Australia uh, from a whole range of different reasons you'll all know Throat by Ellen Van Nieven we launched earlier in the year went on to win the Quentin the inaugural Quentin Bryce award her second collection of poetry Ghost Word by Lisa Fuller novel YA won the Queensland Literary Prize for YA Song of the Crocodile, still reading it by Nadi Simpson, by Hachette, uh, her first novel, and it's part of the Black and White um, program. Amazing. Read it. Uh, tell me why Archie Roach, the story of my life and my music. His words on the page are as powerful uh, as his voice is on stage. Um, Many people will be challenged by his story, but I guarantee it, you it will stay with you forever. And my read of the year, I would have to say, is Luicia, the authorised biography of Luicia O'Donoghue uh, by Stuart Rintoll. Uh, I can't remember who that's published by, sorry. But really, it made me want to be a better human. It made Her story made me want to do more to make this world a better place and just an extraordinary human being. So they're my recommendations uh, and they're on my blog. You, you could not possibly be a better human, Anita. And, <laughs> and you also are such, a, you are such an inspiration for so many people and not just Aboriginal people. You are an inspiration for me and other writers um, and particularly um, Brisbane-based writers because this is a Brisbane-based um, show. Um, we, we just are so proud to have you as a part of our cohort at the moment. Can I just tell you, Chrissy, sorry, I know people need to go, but when I talk about Brisbane um, and why it's so special to me and why I wrote Titters, which is like a love letter to Brisbane, um, I talk about the collegiality of writers in that city. It's, it's not like anything else I've ever experienced. Uh, and I can't imagine now living somewhere without that sense of collegiality. Um, everybody 
I think we're lucky we are in the art form we're in in terms of literature because people are happy when we're happy for each other when we win awards where we're happy for people's successes we we celebrate when we see other writers whether we know them or not online saying I've signed a contract or I'm doing this gig or I had this school visit and we get excited about uh, the stories of the storyteller and I think what we've done tonight and what you do with this series is we're getting the stories behind the story and I th and I thank you for that and I thank you for letting me be part of such an extraordinary cult. Oh. <laughs> you have pride Best of cult. cult. <laughs> Absolutely and I can't wait to see um, what happens with the next draft of this play because um, I can you know it's already in such a great shape um, I really can't wait to see it performed and then to kind of reread the book actually um, because you know it was kind of like there's there's similarities but there's so many differences between um, the book and the play and it would be really nice to kind of put them next to each other. I hope I see everybody there wearing their jacaranda coloured clothes. <laughs> I've asked for a jacaranda carpet instead of a red carpet and uh, a jacaranda media wall for the photos because I think it's that you know that's why I mean I haven't got this up because of, I work at UQ I've got this behind me because I wanted to have jacaranda because it's so beautiful and it's so Brisbane yeah it surely is <laughs> absolutely so look we we have we have five minutes left Miranda do you have anything to ask while we're I do I was going to ask oh, sorry I'm just replying to a chat thing um my, this is this is sorry Anita this is a bit shallow this question but you know when you're writing the novel did you like kind of picture the characters and sometimes I picture them even as actors or actresses as I'm working so I know what they look like and then you obviously have had to go away and write the play and then other so in your mind did you have actors you wanted to play those parts yeah, absolutely and, and if and if they couldn't does the new actor bring, and then, you know, sometimes you read a book and you've pictured how you think the character is, but then you see the movie and you love it just as much, but it's different from how you pictured it. Did you find that happen too when other actors played your parts? Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting question because, mm. because, yes, because I didn't, I didn't think about actors when I was writing the book, I, but, I, but I do, my methodology for writing a novel or any book really is, I write my synopsis, I write a long synopsis and a short synopsis. I do character breakdowns, I write a profile for, what are you doing with your finger there, Cass? In the, right up there. Uh, I do a character breakdown for each of the main characters. So, you know, their personality traits, any quirks, how they dress, um, you know, if they're, if they're allergic to something, their backstory. So when I sit down to write, I know, well, you know, Nadine only wears organic hemp clothes or whatever, right? And so I, I, I have a vision of what they look like. You know, if Ellen runs along, you know, I've written, you know, she's got a ponytail. I know she runs and so she's got to pull her hair. Her hair's got to be long enough to pull back an old ponytail. You know, so I... I had visions of what they look like. Now, when we talked about the play, I go, oh, I want Miranda Tapsell, yeah. uh, Izzy. I want, she'd be the perfect Izzy. I want Shari Seven. She would, Tansy. yeah. Yeah, I, I want, I went, I wanted Justine Clark um, for Nadine. And she did the first read of Nadine mm, and mm. just smashed it out of the park. I couldn't, great. couldn't. And I'm messaging her going, like, are you actually drunk? Because she was playing <laughs> And she, it was 11 o'clock in the morning. But, you know, Chrissy will know that we, you know, I've had two, two or three different uh, Nadines since then. Uh -huh. And the Nadine that we had on, on the, at the play, uh, the reading, was just incredible. Like, and just also, you know, so, you know, I also have to trust, I think as, as you know, I'm, I don't know all the entire theatre sector yeah. obviously um we had we, we were flying in if it opened we were flying in justin we're flying in tasma walton some of you want to tasma walton yeah and she was going to play um a character so um i still i have a wish list but also all those characters oh, there's so many fantastic actors out there i think the problem is many of the brisbane actors have moved to melbourne so we're mm. actually there's not a huge bucket of actors and particularly mm. black actors in um in in brisbane um and so we do want to nurture the brisbane you know the queensland theater community of course we do um and so uh i think we'll just the the, I, the play was meant to be on stage in september next year it looks like it'll be march 2022 um who knows who will be discovered between now and then as well so mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah. I, you know, when I didn't get the actors I wanted straight away, I was like, oh, I don't care, you choose whoever you want. <laughs> <laughs> because they also know what they're doing yeah they do and you might find the next perfect person for that for that part and you know? also, it may be someone who's not trained at night or it may be mm. someone who's, not, who's completely fresh you might come in and just do a read and be able to do it mm. um, learning these things you know and so Nadine McDonald Dowd did the read for um Xanthi uh, recently mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. an actor you know, and she's really good, but she's yeah, she's so. amazing. Hey, yeah. um, just before we leave, because we do have to um, end soon, so that people can get to the Tim Flannery event that we have on tonight. Um, oh. uh, <laughs> we would rather stay. With we you, love Tim Flannery. Yeah. yeah, we love Tim Flannery. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about? Because I saw a jacket for a new book that might. Be <gasps> mm. yes, I've got my new book. So beautiful. Um. So how about I share my screen? And talk oh, about so, okay. I'll just make you, I'll make you be able to share your screen. Give me a second. No, I wasn't planning that. But um, the, the... You can now. Your screen. I've got to have it on my desktop. Okay. So uh, what happens is I've got a new book coming out in May next year. It's a Mother's Day book. It's set in Gundagai. It begins in 1852 um, at the Great Flood of Gundagai. And it goes through to 19, 1868 with the opening of the Brungle Mission where my mother went to school in her upper primary where a lot of my family still are now. Here we go. So you can see a little bit there. Can you see that? Beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. So um, Billa Yadda Dungalung Darai. So Billa is river. Yadda Dung is dream. Galung means many. And uh, Durai, Durai is having. So the, the river of having many dreams is what it's called. Um, and it's exciting for me and for mob back home and country where I was the last four days doing the finalisation of this and talking to elders and checking things and making sure they know what's inside it. Um, and it's exciting because it's the first time in commercial Australian publishing that they're having not having English on the, on the front cover. So Simon and Schuster drove that i had asked for it were adri on the cover last year and they're like oh it's a really long word it's a and it is really long i don't know uh and then um i had a conversation with my publisher who's fantastic cass um and she said we really want to push the boundaries anita i said well if you really want to push the boundaries let's not have english on the front cover at all mm -hmm. and so that will be on the back so we're very excited about that we've had some good feedback but for me, at the end of the day, it's great that, that, that it looks good. Oh, also, my cousin, Luke Penrith, he lives in Brungle, where the story ends. It, the mission was set up in 1888, but it's the story. Uh, he did the Goanna, and that's the totem for a lot of Wagga and Brungle and so forth, and my family's totem. And the cockatoo, or Karaka, Karaka Galung, uh, the cockatoos, at, at, you can see them. They come out at dusk over the river in Wagga, and they, they, they just, they're so noisy. And my beautiful friend, some of you will know Kerry Reed Gilbert, um, she passed away last year. She was an author, a poet, and an activist, and um, that was her totem. So uh, the character, the, one of the, the, the Wagadine is the main character. Wagadine means dancer because Wagga, Wagga, Wagga Wagga is the place of dance. And so Wagga means dance, celebration. So um, Wagadine's totem is the cockatoo after her mother's totem. So there's a lot of, a lot of explanation in there. Sorry. That's fantastic. beautiful. Yeah, that's it's really beautiful. beautiful. Um, so, oops, um, are we going to, I think we, yeah, here, we, here we are. Beautiful. Look, it has been such a pleasure talking with you tonight. And even though we do miss you, Cass, um, we actually um, enjoyed talking to Miran with Mirandi as well. So it's lovely to have Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's lovely to have a team of people in Brisbane who can, um, who can chat to our Brisbane authors, no matter where they are in Australia or the world. Mm -hmm. and I did wonder where everybody is. Like, Fiona, are you in Brisbane too? And Gail, is everybody in Brisbane? Yeah? What no, where you? Meg Boland, where are you tonight? She's in Queen Bien. <gasps> Queen Bien! I used to work at the Queen Bien RSL. I don't even think it's there anymore. <laughs> All right. I bet I'm it is. Open it up. Um, I'm going to open it up for... Um, a final uh, clap. So, can I take a photo of everybody? Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'm going to change the view for our. Um, oh, excellent. 
and um, opened it up so people can have a final clap. Um, and their cameras on. We no. absolutely love you. So um, <laughs> thank you for joining us tonight. Bell. Hi, Christine Bell. Where's Pipes? There's Piper. Thank you. Isn't this a lovely way to spend? What is today? Monday. Monday. Now we can hit the wine. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. See you back in Brisbane eventually or Queen Bean. Or <laughs> love you. See you later. All righty. See you later. Wiradjuri for love you is... Um, uh, oh, Nurbal Nindu. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>